with a proud legacy which spans 50 years of advancing St. Lucia's socio-economic development, Invest St. Lucia is recognized today as a purpose-driven, vision-focused, and professional investment promotion agency. Our story began 50 years ago in 1972 when the National Development Corporation was made operational and given an important mandate to stimulate, facilitate and undertake the economic development of St. Lucia. Our job was um, promoting and facilitating investment and we were very vigorously uh, involved in doing just that. I think we had properties that we managed, government properties that we managed in Viewfort. Um, we had started to build um, factory shells for investors. The NDC has a, a proud legacy in terms of um, what it has achieved, both as NDC and Invest St. Lucia. And I, and I hope that it will grow from strength to strength. Prior to NDC, there's nothing really, there's nobody that was doing anything specifically targeted on development. At that time, NDC did virtually everything. We were involved in investment promotion, we were involved in student, student loans, we were in, involved in handling government's investments in various um, activities in the country. You know, Denry Farm, Go St. Lucia Model Farms, St. Lucia Fish Market Incorporation, the fisheries complex. In the 1970s and 1980s, the newly formed NDC was at the forefront of St. Lucia's economic growth as the country pursued a policy of industrial development by invitation. For many, the NDC era was new and exciting, providing avenues to shape the careers of some of St. Lucia's brightest minds. You had investors continuously coming from overseas who were interested in coming to establish themselves here and it was always very um, extraordinary and always very promising. Then we had the tours, we had exchange programs where you had our St. Lucian producers like people like Byron Foods and Rosary who were able to do exchanges. Even Fruitsy came on board where we had the exchange with maybe Martinique, Guadeloupe, Dominica, we had that. And, um, product development, we had the crafters, we had the artisans, it was awesome. It was really, really interesting to work in the development area. The NDC was not well known in St. Lucia, and so we did a lot of PR um, as far as the NDC was concerned, and we got even involved in, um, within the schools. We, had a, we started a, a, a debate competition within the schools just so that we can let the name of the NDC out and let people know what it was all about. We got our expertise and our administration skills um, in that regard with respect to consultants, consultancy and whatnot. Mr. Mark Enicat, Kalei Gustav and, and Charlie Haywood, those were basically the guys that really mold me into what I am now because those guys they were basically guys of principle within the profession. We were always a, a serious group in ensuring that we get work done. And when we had projects, we would work all two, three o'clock in the morning and not look for any reward. I'd just come out of school. It was my very first job. So I was, you know, very, very um, new to, to, you know, working in, in the construction sector. So for me, it was my introduction to the world of work. Being a young woman in the construction sector in the 80s and into the 90s was, um, it could be challenging. Um, so it was where I first learned to navigate those peculiarities as a, as a woman in the construction sector. During the period of industrial development, the NDC designed and built factory shells to attract and accommodate investors in the manufacturing sector. This stimulated record levels of job creation as products made in St. Lucia enjoyed preferential market access under various trading agreements. You had a lot of people, especially women, and single mothers who were at home looking for jobs. Whenever there was activity in any factory shell, people just deluged to start, 
where do I apply for a job? They were just people who were looking for jobs, people who, who perhaps had just left high school, they didn't have any major certificates, but they just needed to get something to support their families, to support their children, to send their children to school. The salaries were not great, but at least they were still able to provide a living for their family. I think NDC, in, 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 in a large, to a large extent, was keeping Viewfort together. Viewfort was gelling. For instance, it was a place where a lot of young women worked, coming from Choiseul to the southwest region, right, wrapping right back around to Denry, because of that era when there was a lot of factory shells and the type of work at was attractive to women. So it became a hub. But had Viewfort pro provided then housing, it would have exploded into a, in, into a real town. The NDC also undertook large-scale infrastructural developments which transformed key areas such as Rodney Bay and Point Seraphine. The, the initial building structure um, had become, was not viable. It, and yet there was a big demand for space. So we decided, look, we need to expand it to take advantage of that demand and to make the whole project viable. And we did something quite remarkable. I remember going to the Prime Minister at the time, John Compton, and he said, where are you going to get the money to do this? Of course, he had no intention to finance it. But the demand was so high that people were prepared to pay big deposits in hundreds of thousands of dollars to get a space. And we actually, the western end of that building, which you'll notice is very different from the original structure, was built in six weeks. That turned it around and made um, Point Seraphon a very uh, highly profitable unit for the NDC, of course, for the empowering us to do other things. The Rodney Bay development was also a major development fielded, actually, by um, Invest St. Lucia when it was National Development Corporation. And it was done as a partnership with Rodney Bay Limited. And um, the National Development Corporation was a very, very integral part of it and it was done through a loan from the Commonwealth Development um, Corporation. We see what Rodney Bay has done in terms of development, um, you know, a platform and a, a, a grounding for development in the North, totally transforming it. Throughout the years, the agency has leveraged its assets to drive national development. This includes lands vested to the corporation in 1972. A significant land portfolio in the south of the island attracted the attention of the investors behind one of the Eastern Caribbean's oldest medical schools. Spartan Health Sciences opened its doors in Viewfort in 1983, impacting surrounding communities in a significant way. You can measure that impact um, uh, based on the amount of uh, rental properties that developed uh, around the, the fact that there was a medical school. And uh, it's, it's similar to other parts in the world where you have uh, university communities. Along with the vesting of lands to the NDC came the responsibility to manage these assets in a manner which would facilitate socio-economic advancement. This at times proved challenging. It was a constant trial of demand on the capacity of the organization to deal with squatter problems, um, monitoring lands, trying to prevent further squatting, and getting involved in a lot of domestic issues between squatters. Um, so it became a burden to the organ, and it's not concerns me. I thought that it was diverting away from the main purpose of the organization. And I also felt that these lands could be put to better economic use if people had actual ownership of them, and that they could mortgage them, they could leverage them for, for their own advancement. A proposal was pitched to the then Prime Minister that lands should be transferred to the occupants at discounted prices. This was eventually embraced by the government. Residential land development would also form another key component of the NDC's contributions to St. Lucia's socio-economic development. The government had vested 6,000 acres of land in the NDC and being such a major landowner, um, we had to try to make lands available to persons not just for industrial development, but for residential, agricultural. And as such, 
the NDC got involved in a lot of residential development. So Black Bay, phase one, phase two, phase three was developed. Um, we started a housing, a housing development very close to the, the brewery. And we also did three phases of residential development lots at Latuni. While the NDC had carved out a decades-long legacy of development, the 2000s ushered in a new era. The manufacturing industry had declined, and the agency now had to reprioritize the use and management of key assets such as factory shells. Just the recognition of the need to invest in, um, co-invest in physical, providing the physical space for an institution of that nature, the role it plays with regards to economic development, supporting industrial development, the NDC at the time had the foresight to meander its you know, limitations with the use of the factory shells at the time to allow for the Bureau of Standards to be anchored there and grew. The new century also presented an opportune moment to expand, diversify and modernize the agency. One of the first things we did was to uh, um, reorganize the physical space. Um, first of all, in terms of appearance as an investment agency. Um, so the facade you see there in terms of the entrance um, as the reception area, this is something that we brought on to bring it up to a more of an international level. Uh, so we created a, de a department physically as well. Um, we restructured the office so that there was a, actually a unit um, whereby um, the, the investment portion of the uh, agency would become more, um, uh, more visual, um, in, engage more staff and um, give them the equipment and a comfortable working environment. Transforming the NDC into a modern organization um, with targeted goals and inspiring confidence in St. Lucia as an investment destination. I recall that we had begun working with the St. Lucia Tourism Authority or the Tourist Board, as it was called then. A new logo was being you know, put in place. They were softening again the image of the Pitons, a nice wavy sort of character. And a number of other government agencies, entities would buy into that. And I was happy that we were leading the charge. And in fact, we became the first agency to sort of move in adopting the new logo and to put our own brand to it. On the international scene, we became more prominent in the in WIPA, which is the World Association of um, Investment Promotion Agencies, we became more prominent and occupied seats at the highest level in that. And we leveraged that sufficiently. We were instrumental in the f formation of the Caribbean Association of Investment Pol um, Promotion Agencies. And then we had a strategic alliance with um, Jampro of Jamaica. And through that, we were able to get investments. In the early period, I think it was a lot. Uh, there was a lot to do with viewfort and lands and, and 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 land development in the south of the island. In the in the in the um, period 12 to 16, uh, we were more um, focused on on investment into St. Lucia. Um, and the development in, in, in that period of particularly the hotels um, sector. And um, so there was, there was definitely a transformation from m land management as an institution to investment promotion. By 2012, the NDC had been formally rebranded to Invest St. Lucia, a name which reflected the agency's advancement into the 21st century. But while the agency's name and image have changed, our focus has always remained the same, stimulating economic growth and job creation. Through the decades, Invest St. Lucia has fulfilled this mandate by facilitating the birth and expansion of some of the biggest names in local business. We approach NDC, Invest St. Lucia at the time, um, the general manager, and uh, he saw something in me which he equated to the success of St. Lucia. And he leased a factory shell 
to us, knowing fully well I didn't have the finance. So what he did, he commuted the terms. From $10,500 per month, he offered us to pay five, then seven, then nine, and then 10. So he got back the money in long term. IGY's relationship with Invest St. Lucia um, has been pivotal in, in getting us to where we are today. In 2006, IGY acquired the marina, and from that day really is when the relationship started in terms of assistance, um, in terms of just simple things of guiding a new foreign company um, into St. Lucia and how to do business, the ease of doing business, um, the concessions that were available, and the benefits to making the marina more feasible, um, more attractive for, for sailors, for locals like ourselves to enjoy the facility. When I came here, I mean, the process was very easy. Um, the collaboration between the different ministries was seamless, and uh, especially between Invest St. Lucia and Ministry of Tourism. When we decided that we were going into the manufacturing sector, truth is none of us have any experience in that sector and so we said well we have to get help we need somebody who can guide us along our journey i wouldn't imagine getting as far as i did without invest in lucia assisting us and if i have to do it all over again i will be knocking at invest in lucia's door to do it all over again we spent a lot of time trying to go out and grow the ict sector and the, the bpo sector and we were very successful in, in, in that regard. You know, it was one of the areas to mop up a lot of the unemployment in our, in, our, in our community. And we were very, very successful in doing that, in Viewfort in particular. Um, but Cashers was not isolated. We had major growth in, in the north as well. So we started our operations here in St. Lucia in 2004. And from the very get-go, we've had a really fruitful and beneficial relationship with Invest St. Lucia. They have really been uh, the bedrock of a lot of the things we've done here, and we credit them with the um, expansion we've been able to do in St. Lucia. Now we're venturing into our third year in St. Lucia, and I'm proud to say that you know, we have over a thousand agents working for us in St. Lucia. We're in three buildings, we're about to move into a fourth and have potential on a, on a fifth building and all of that has been driven by the support and direction of Investment St. Lucia. Invest St. Lucia has also become a trusted source for information and support relied upon by both the public and private sector. He said, we are closing down a big part of our business in Aruba and we would like to bring this business to St. Lucia, but we need concessions. When they applied to government, government turned them down and felt that they had enough concessions, they were there long enough, they didn't need any more concessions. I had a good relationship with Dr. Ante. I said, Dr. Ante, listen to me. I'm on that board. I see what's happening. I see the kind of employment, the figures there. Give them, the, consider giving them the concession. He said, you're putting me in a spot. But he took some time, he went back to his cabinet, they approved it. That's one of the best decisions they made because these people added 40% to their turnover. It is extremely helpful when you know that there is a, a resource you can access quite easily. It's a telephone call away, an email away, um, who can advise you and guide you. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to operate, and that is what I see uh, Invest St. Lucia, you know, for. Um, wherever we need assistance, especially at government level. Definitely an organization like Invest St. Lucia can play a critical role in creating an enabling environment in the business community, facilitating um, investment uh, through means of creating access to concessions and other things that will help a business person get started and of course continue a successful enterprise. I think we have really developed into one of government's strong strategic partners for the development of the economy. So um, there are a lot of sectors that government leans on the advice of Invest in Lucia to help develop, um, whether it's a, a restructuring of a sector or getting into a new sector. I think we've become uh, a well-trusted partner 
um, for central government and for cabinet um, in terms of things such as you know the, C the CIP program. We assist the CIP office with certain policy initiatives, um, economic substance, um, the youth economy in terms of um, you look at incubation and acceleration, the BPO sector. Outside of contributions to major sectors such as manufacturing, business process outsourcing and tourism, Invest St. Lucia has also played a role in supporting the creative industries. The laptop that was provided by the NDC laid the foundation for the career that I have today. I use it to record and also to create and edit productions. Productions that you know and love, such as Freaky Girls, Sully, St. Lucia We Love, Glococo, The St. Lucian Rhythm, and songs that launch the careers of some of your favorite artists like Cupid with a helicopter and water, Ninja Dance Karate, Marianne Sheetin, Superman HD, DJ Iowa, Kakal, Ambi, Monks, and so many more. Desperately, I needed um, you know, financial support to procure my tools that would have taken me to the next level. And um, fortuitously, there was this um, grant from NDC that I applied for via the CDF and I received it and ever since you know my my career has burgeoned has been leaps and bounds because I really needed that very important boost at that particular juncture. Beyond growing the economy and supporting key sectors we've also maintained an unwavering commitment to creating impact where it matters most the lives of our people. It's the stories of the lives we've touched that continue to guide Invest St. Lucia's focus as an agency. The energy between the agency and its clients is very welcoming. They treat each client with fairness. I recently purchased land from Invest St. Lucia. The agency made it very easy for me in purchasing land. They guided me through every step until the end when I was ready to build. I used to like carry banda for people you know? and then when I get that job as though that was a, a, a good prayer. The crew I work in with Emran, that's the best crew I ever worked in my life. Yep, I don't feel so good about that. Stories like that of a single mother who became a proud homeowner through our collaboration with sister agencies and a host of corporate sponsors. I'm feeling really uh, like a, a big relief, like everything just come out. Like today, everything just is <laughs> just a relief. I'm excited. I'm happy. These are the stories which have always driven the work of our staff, past and present. Over the years, uh, we, I, I got to understand the impact that Invest St. Lucia has on um, St. Lucia and the economy and on the lives of, of um, St. Lucians. So for me it was um, very gratifying to know that the contributions that we make at Invest St. Lucia or that I make at Invest St. Lucia as an individual do have impact on the livelihoods of St. Lucia. The a role that Invest in Lucia plays um, in, in the country in terms of development. Um, it's something that's very rewarding and accomplishing, so you want to see yourself as part of that, knowing that you were responsible or, or actually part of um, what, what has been done here in St. Lucia in terms of um, sustainable development. And while we've attracted millions of dollars in revenue to our shores, our continued investment in the people of St. Lucia has yielded the greatest return. Perhaps the best testament to this is our own staff, many of whom have grown significantly over years of fulfilling service. 12 years is a, is a large chunk of anybody's career development. Um, it's taught me to be nimble. It's taught me to um, take things as they come, um, to address challenges, to know my limitations, know what I can do and what I can't do, where to ask for help. Um, and those are qualities that are helpful in both a professional and personal setting. Invest in Lucia has allowed me to develop in my career. Um, the requirements of the agency has changed over the years, as has the field of information technology. So that has allowed me to grow my career 
so that I can apply um, the, to the requirements of Invest in Lucia. Throughout the decades, Invest in Lucia has continued to make the adjustments necessary to position the organization as the leading investment promotion agency that it is today. Our staff are proud to have witnessed and contributed to the agency's transformation. A lot of changes, good things though, um, especially out in um, the south of the island. I've seen the residents as gain um, something, they have something to show that they're part of St. Lucia. When I first came in, they only had phase one, which is the existence of the clay tires and everything. And later on, a couple of years after, I think some 85 or something like that, they built phase two. Right? It would be an open area, to be a, the ship should be docking, and the whole area had no fence in the time. After 911, they put a fence to a restricted area. When I joined, it was the focus was, yes, it was investment, but it was primarily um, the industrial estates, factories, garment, um, different um, products, and the development of residential lands. Uh, since the company has um, rebranded into Invest in Russia, the company has been more involved in, in foreign direct investment as well as assisting local entrepreneurs. When it was the National Development Corporation, the main focus was um, v and the New Frontier for Development and seeking investors for factories and lands. But with the rebranding and Invest in Russia, the whole dynamics has changed. There's more focus on foreign and local direct investment. I think the investment um, department is more keen now and more directed in terms of investment promotion and development of the economic growth of St. Lucia in total. And as we look to the future, we recognize the need for Invest St. Lucia to continuously reassess and redefine our focus to meet the needs of our economy and our people. The areas of manufacturing, as well as elements of our food security and, and the opportunities where we can derive from agricultural manufacturing as well. Um, it doesn't take away from our continued focus on tourism, but with the efforts that our parent ministry have embarked upon in terms of the village tourism and bringing the, the, the benefits of tourism to everybody, you know, significant work is being made there. But the lesser identified sector of manufacturing presents the greatest opportunity as well as our food production and security. I think it's important that we diversify as much as possible. I would love to see more entrepreneurs in St. Lucia. I would also love to see us take greater advantage of the oceans around us. I think we've sort of marginalized the potential in that area by just focusing on the yachting. I think the blue economy offers a lot more. I think Invest in Lucia now is looking at the possibility of looking at that on a more holistic scale. I think the focus should really be on diversification of the St. Lucian economy, and I think Invest in Lucia has the biggest part to play in that. Um, uh, the, the other focus also on tourism is not a bad thing. What I think we need to do is to um, uh, expand the tourism industry so that it touches more of the other sectors. There are a lot of vulnerable people who need their investment education and generally our professionals, our potential investors need proper education in investment. There are people who have assets who can invest but um, they do not have the proper mindset, they do not have the understanding of the regional, well, the national, regional, and international environment when it comes to investment. More and more our investment has to focus on building smarter, greener economies and societies. So we need smart infrastructure. We need greener, uh, you know, ancillaries to tourism, theme parks, um, you know, products that are more reflective of the natural values of St. Lucia, the natural attributes of St. Lucia. So our culinary offerings, our food and beverages, even uh, the materials and the, you know, what we use, you know, in our spas, the spa treatments, um, you know, the products that we sell as souvenirs, you know, all that should be part of a natural St. Lucian uh, brand. Above all, 
We are excited about the opportunities to continue our tradition of facilitating projects which focus on job creation and socio-economic advancement. Invest St. Lucia uh, showed us uh, the opportunities uh, that exist uh, on the island. They were the primary uh, guidance in uh, selecting the location of the hotel. Uh, they were the primary guidance of uh, the needs and uh, the necessities of the local market. Uh, this is how we were able to identify a particular niche uh, where our project will operate uh, and have its success. Invest in Lucia plays a key role in terms of our expansion. Right now they have helped us facilitate uh, by securing land for our expansion needs, which is almost seven acres of land. And with that they are also helping us seek the necessary approvals, prerequisites that we need to facilitate this expansion. This is who we are, Invest St. Lucia. We remain guided always by what Invest St. Lucia represents to you. Adaptive. Innovative. Impactful. Helpful. Hope. Opportunity. God sin. Progress. Game changer. Transformational. Life changing.